I think what Numpty had said is when you first get an assassin like that, first you play them as if you're Rainer, so really far back and just you know be as safe as possible. Then play that ranged assassin like you're like, like your Kerrigan, like super melee, and find out how far you can go without dying to really, really, really figure out just by you know being as aggressive as possible and as passive as possible where to find that line for that hero because Zul'jin has no escape. Oh, I, you, I disagree with that. Oh, you know, with that, that line of thinking. No. What, just be, be once you once you're comfortable, once you're comfortable with the character, you should yolo as far as you can to see how far you can push your hero. Yeah, and yeah, that's skill what I'm back yeah. from that. That's, that's what, what I do all the if time. If you if you play <laughs> passively, you're just gonna play passively. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, would, yeah, play wait, wait, is, I wouldn't is, say play passively. I, I'd say you go aggressive, and if you die, you dial it back. You gotta you gotta yeah. test your limits to find out what you can get away with. If you're playing passively. You know, you're going to get away with shit all game. Like, I, that just irks me when I see, you know, the gray man who's, you know, top damage and one death. But it's like, all you did was, you know, you did your little, like, Q build and never went into melee form. It's like, you got, sometimes you got to get in there and get your hands dirty. And, you know, if, if it didn't work out, you know, you say, okay, I got to dial it back a little bit. Yeah, you know that Greyman that dies really hard and then he ends up dying stupidly? Oh, well, 50, mm-hmm. 60 games from now, when he's played that many Greyman games, he's going to be, you know, doing plays and actually getting kills off of those things. So, I mean, you just got to die to learn how far you can go. The biggest thing I have a problem with that with that tip is it's just, it's just passive playstyles. And, you know, all those moments where the enemy runs away at 10% health or 5% health, and you're like, shit, I sh- could have gotten them. Well, that's why there are well, tendencies uh, and uh, patterns you learn over time. Well, exactly. But you have to that, make that mistake to see it happen. Say, oh, shit, I played too passively. And then realize it and then learn from it. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Like, the, start from the opposite. Passively. No, no, man, you do both. You do both. <laughs> Not, this is where you start. You just do both. <laughs> No, uh, like I, we don't do both. I, yeah, like both. It it doesn't single, to I told you this, Pat. Hurt. I told you this, Pat. You play like a pussy. Oh, oh. you gotta stop doing it. You gotta stop doing it. I'm telling you. I hear you. The couple times we played the, past, the the couple times we played together the past couple of weeks, that was my biggest problem with you. Didn't I say? Like yeah, you, we, we missed that. a lot of opportunities because. You as the tank, also the initiator, were playing too passively. You, ha- I mean, the name of the game is ganks and rotations, especially in the early game, and trying to get a pick. And by playing passively and thinking like that, you do not win the game. You just lose slowly. But I'm Those not the games saying I hate to lose. I'm saying with two heroes, <laughs> play the spectrum of YOLO to passive to figure out where you no. need to be. Learn his QWE, learn his talents, and then just go YOLO. And then try to. So basically, I mean, Bacon and Scott are saying go to the extremes and dial it back, while Old Backpack is saying, you know, it's go be very more passive and then slowly. It's, no, get to the it's point a learning curve. No, 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 it, it's no, much no, no, no. no. It, it's <laughs> it's much easier to learn what you can get away with and be effective with going too far and dialing it back than starting at the back line and stepping forward because your steps forward are going to be much slower and you're basically going to be more passive to the point where if you die, it's just like, Oh shit, I better dial it back. Where it's just like, you know what? Sometimes you are going to die no matter what you do. Sometimes dying is the best move where if you're playing passive and you die, like, Oh, I should have paid, played more passive and ran away with uh, my whole team dying and just me surviving. And just like, yeah, I got some damage in though. No, so I'm not saying start from yellow, work back, go passive, work forward. I'm not saying that. I'm saying play yellow, play passive, and go and go, go find the middle in between those two. Instead of doing no, yellow, don't and play back, passive. If you work both, then work both Just sides. Don't play into the passive. Center. Playing passive is e- every game I've played where I was carried by a grandmaster <laughs> who's ten times better than me. I always had trouble keeping up with him because he was always attack, attack, attack. Always, whatever we're doing with the gank, he's always on the, his next step. Like, and I'm always <laughs> trying to catch up to what he's trying to do. So you just, I'm telling you, man, 
you can't play passively in this game if you want to get better. Yeah, the the only time you're playing passive is if you're waiting for a power spike to where you can play aggressive. You yes. know, like there there are some teams where it's just like our pre ten game is terrible. You know, you got a variant on your team. We don't have a real tank until level ten. Those those. I mean, I struggle with this because I love playing aggressive, <laughs> but those are the only times where you should be playing passive is to where you're waiting for a power spike to where you could be aggressive. So this okay. has became a talk of passive versus aggressive play, which yeah. I'm talking about. When learning a new hero and how to play that hero, you have to find the limits of your character. <laughs> different different you, you don't find there. the limit of your character by playing passive. But you do. You realize you have played too passive, realizing you can't do this if it's bad play. No, no you, you, you play, passive, you, when rule, you play passive, you're, <laughs> all, you say, oh, this, this, what I'm doing, I do a lot of damage, and it worked, and I'm not dying. That's good, right? And when, exactly. In reality, if you, if you played more aggressive, you could have done so much more. That, you, that play style is uh, pad your numbers and look good play style, and that actually get things done in the game play style. Yeah, that's the Razor MMR in the next... Uh, <laughs> patch play style but you're not actually helping your team win play style but but you have to know what passive is to realize that it's bad if you're always playing aggressive you don't know what passive is you have to understand what the spectrum but if you're you want to learn that passiveness is bad learn it right now passiveness is bad there you go but never mind alright alright it's uh no Look, wait, 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 popcorn's done. Let me go get the everyone microwave. I've yeah, looked exactly. up to. <laughs> everyone I've looked, everyone I've looked up to in this game has played aggressive as fuck every time. And Scott, he, he plays too aggressively, but he's also <laughs> learned to turn back. He, but exactly. he's fine. Scott plays too he's aggressively. He's gotten better. He has to dial it back. That dial back he, is a spectrum. And, and then he he dials it back. He's improved. He's won more games. Now he's masters. Like it, it's so he became more passive. I have a counter argument, Bacon. Yeah. yeah, but I didn't start off passive, and the thing is, I didn't say start off passive. <laughs> I said play. I know, but you people. Yeah, Listen but to you're the words out saying, of my mouth. Yeah, but you're saying start off passive and move forward. No, 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 no. You have well, to no, know. Well, here's here's what you're saying, Pat. You're playing play a good play style, uh, also play a bad play style. Why would you even play the bad play style to begin with? Do you know what Just bad play is? the better play style. Yeah. Yeah, but you have better is relative to bad. So what is bad? Passive. Exactly. <laughs> <It's laughs> exactly. You have to know it. Uh, that is the worst play style. That is a play style I cannot stand. The the passive losing slowly play style. It's I, like all right, I all don't right. even play that. Not, I will bang my head against style. the wall. I'm okay. dying uh, ten deaths right, in a game. Right, right. While the, the rest of my team's right. just like, you know what? We're just gonna lane, and you know, maybe, maybe <laughs> they'll just run one at a time into our team so we can get ganks. And I'll just try and force shit, and it won't work. But I'm just like, fuck it. At least I'm trying to do something. <laughs> All <laughs> right, let, let's uh, let's go to Tower Baron. What about Voldemort? <laughs> Hyper aggressive. <laughs> we all agree he's not That's, good. Yes, exactly. but he's also not a player who's. Uh, Learning to play the game better. Okay. Exactly. From what you're telling he me, he's, he doesn't play enough. He doesn't. He's not in it to get better. He's just in it to have fun and do his own thing, right? So we're not talking about players like him. We're playing. T- we're talking about players like us, who want to get into this game, play the best games possible, and improve over time, right? And Ganji Gun says in chat, it's about understanding when to be aggressive and when to be patient. And the best yeah. way to learn that is be yeah. aggressive as possible as much as possible and then dial it back from there because the most effective play style in this game is aggressiveness if you're playing patient you're not taking advantage of enemy mistakes you're not in position to get kills do more damage you're responding to the enemy if you play passively you need to be the one with the keys controlling the pace of the game so uh, actually uh, uh, Ganjigun there's there's a little a uh, little bit of a a little bit of a um, carry on the stick for you if you get to grandmaster at any point uh as long as we're still doing the show I will shave my beard how do you like that 
Oh shit! Yeah, if you can get the grandmaster, the best challenge. Yeah, that's that a challenge. Random challenge. challenge. <laughs> Cause I right. actually want uh, it'd be cool to have another listener get to grandmaster. So if you can get get the grandmaster at any point while the show is still active, uh, I will shave the beard off. So there you go. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there you go. And also, uh, right. I mean, we've I've, had this conversation before, Pat. This is also my. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it out there. This is my biggest problem with you and, and your play style. Oh, here we go. Is uh, we've had several discussions already saying you need to be more aggressive. Right? Well, yeah. uh, uh, I know. Let, let, me, let me let me step in. You gotta remember, Bacon, that he's playing on like pretty bad lag, though. But bad lag doesn't prevent you pr- from pressing Q as Diablo on the enemy. You just do it. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, saw I know. Him, yeah, well, but anyway, all right. Let's. Well, I'm not trying to make this a personal I mean, if, thing. If you I disagree, I mean, send. If you disagree, send in an email. Okay, you know, I would like to see your point of view, but you know, as, as someone who's climbed and experienced all this, and experienced and played with HGC players, I'm not gonna. I just don't want to name drop, but this is to prove <laughs> a point. I'm not just showing off. Okay, so yeah. I know people shit on me for that. All, right. uh, all these players that I played with, they they're so aggressive, right? They're like leading mm-hmm. me by the fucking leash, trying to pull me along to execute their game plan. So obviously they're doing something right because they're one of some of the best players in the world. Yeah. Aggressiveness so, is the better right. way. Okay. So I will tell you my end of this match room. So I've played super aggressive with the tower brands and the fringes, and when that happens. I usually hear the phrase, he's going too deep. Oh, shit, he's going to die. And you usually, usually get punished for it. I, and that's because you're that's playing with people who aren't as good as you who yeah, aren't able to follow with... up what you're doing. However, you're, however. You're a platinum player who... playing with gold and silver so, players. Let me finish. They're, they're that's slow. who we were playing with. <laughs> oh. We were playing with them. It was me, Bacon, and all of them. And so when you play very aggressively with them, they don't follow you up. So it doesn't help. Uh, actually... Taking the video I sent you on the Sky Temple, we were going to do a segment about the team fight. That's exactly what happened when uh, Old Backpack went in the middle of their team and then the rest of the team didn't follow him up. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got blown up. Yes. And then Old they all Backpack got plays up. much more aggressive problem. when I play with him because he knows yeah. I'll pull him up. Exactly. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> so when Bacon's playing support and we have uh, my pussy assassins behind me, I don't play aggressively. <laughs> All right, let's yeah, um, look at that video I sent you baking with Sky no, Temple. Right, That's right. exactly what happened. This is uh, yeah, definitely a uh, lot. Like we're stu- we were stuck in there for like like ten seconds, and the rest of the team just dilly dally in the back. Let's like, not sure. Let's talk about in. some extremes, like like uh, Fringe pe- uh, or Tower Baron in your uh, serv- server level hero league games. Many times you would get a team wipe, but it's like, oh, let's get camps or let's not kill the core. Let's get objective or do something, some other bullshit that's not going to win you the game <laughs> when you could because you got a five-man wipe. Well, on the opposite side, master grand master level games, we could get like two to three picks and then that'll be like, let's just fucking rush, bum rush the core and then like four of us will die in the process, but we'll kill the core anyway and yeah. win the game because the aggressiveness is different. All right. Yeah, in a master level I mean, game, that's... if you have a keep down and you get two kills, so it's a three v five, and the the team isn't going to respawn quick enough that you go core, and you win that fight. Okay. So does this whole aggressive thing mean that dive comps are necessarily better than poke comps? Because are you associating aggressiveness with the type of aggressiveness of the comp or diviness of the hero? No, it's just how you play the hero, the the safety of, you know, like, oh, maybe I should retreat to maybe I should get a couple more auto attacks in. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. all right. You know, you know, you know what's but, funny is that this spiraled out of control and I knew eventually we would me and Tower Baron would get blamed for all of it. <laughs> I just knew no. it. I was, I was sitting here waiting well, for it to happen, and it finally happened. Well, why, why, why did I? I never blamed you guys. I blame I, the mentality of the silver level players or gold level players. That it no. is, it's true, right? It's been you discussed guys, before. No, it's been we, we discussed yeah. about this like a year ago, where like the metas at the the meta at the gold and silver is more like you know you can't be too aggressive because people won't follow you, mm-hmm. so you play more passively. That's just how it is. 
Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, and at, that's a difference level, in the mentality. Yeah, at my level, I'm waiting for the tank to go in because as soon as he goes in, you know, I'm unloading, I'm blowing <laughs> my load within a second. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, He's I'm so sitting proud. there at the. He blows yeah, this is Scott's yeah. drilled right here, guys. I'm yeah. sitting at the keyboard, just yeah. eager to just go in, and I'm Here's just the- like literally waiting for that. Where like at your level, somebody goes in, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> The guy's like, why the fuck are you doing that? Here's that 8.5%. Like in, in moments where we play as a win time group, I'm also often pinging saying, go, 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 team fight, team fight, team fight. Right? More often than not. We're looking I'm, at the grass. Because I'm trying to... Dr- what? Well, when you're pinging that, we're looking at the grass. Or we were like, we're, mm-hmm. no, I was like wait, 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 we have, to clear, we have yeah. to clear that lane first before we go, guys. We can't do that. Yeah. There's <laughs> some globe back here, man. Yeah. That globe. So, all right, let, let's uh, let's and end that. So basically, we, all right, go ahead, Bacon. You, you get the last word. No, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> no, just saying. A, That's the last word a, for that conversation. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that 8.5%. <laughs> I just don't want to put fake news out there, guys. I'm sorry. I, okay. I don't want to call out old backpack, but it's very wrong. Okay. okay. No, wait. Uh, well, he in turn just. No, 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 no. The, I know. I'm, just saying there's, I'm trying to say there's a spectrum of play. You have to understand the whole spectrum. That's what I'm trying to say. This is the. the yeah, the and you create pat- that spectrum from one end, which is the aggressive end, and you move it back. Okay. No, this, this is the mirror old backpack has up, and he's deflecting the blame onto Fringe and Tower Baron right yeah. now. I, all right, that's <laughs> I it. didn't say any of that. that. This is the mirror. It's the mirror. There is a spectrum of play. You must understand the entire spectrum to know what is too much and what is too little. <laughs> all right, so all right, let's um, let's move on now. So, where, 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 where do we get? Yeah, when, <laughs> do you when you make a sandwich? Do you start from oh. the outside in, or do you work from bottom up? Right. What does that have to do with odds? <laughs> yeah, mate, what are we talking about? Yeah. I'm very the bottom slice is aggressiveness, and then you put layers on top. And then the last what? This slice is a of bread is That passiveness. depends how you like your sandwich. <laughs> Wait, don't, don't you eat all layers at the same time? Is it, is you do. You eat all layers. I, the I the went crafting the sandwich, guys, not when you eat it. The, 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 uh, the, biggest question okay. is, the biggest question is, do you toast your bread before you eat it? Yes. Not the subway oh, question. Should. Yes. 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 Should. Subway. Depends subway sucks. You're going to pay that extra dollar to get it toasted. <laughs> and tap. <laughs> but you don't, subway you, sucks. Don't, don't eat it subway. It's bad for you. The, the, the bread is made out of rubber. Chipotle to bring all your dates. Oh, Chipotle. That's Chipotle. Yeah. Bring your dates <laughs> to Chipotle. It's a great idea. Those are only, those are only the hood rats. <laughs> oh. That's Tower Baron's uh, date spot. His first date spot where he That's goes right. to impress the lady. <laughs> so don't worry, guys. I got this. I got your meal. Don't worry. You can get anything you want. And she yeah. makes up a lie and says that she doesn't have her wallet. She has her wallet. She drove here. No guacamole because that's just, two bucks extra. She just wants me to pay for her meal. Can we split bullshit. the guacamole? Can I get half and she get the other half? Can we do that? <laughs> All right. Do you All really right. need a drink? Seriously. <laughs> We're actually going to revisit the uh, passive versus aggressive debate we had <laughs> yes. in the last show. Yes. yes. Oh. So we've actually gotten feedback from yes. wind timers as well as from a uh, a pro player. Oh, backpack. You want to start it off with the responses in wind time, or do you want to go to bacon on this? What do you want to do? How about we we say what we originally said and then talk about how it developed from there. Okay. Wait, let's recap where we were and know where we're going. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Do it. So I think I think you I, should start with defining the terms you're going to use. What does passive mean and what does aggressive mean? Okay. That's so a little bit uh, people got kind of caught up on the terminology. You know what I mean? No. So passive is really in your positioning. Mean how how far forward you want to play in order to do damage to your opponent. Like do you try to kill them or do you try to not die from them? It's how far forward you go and how how aggressive you play, how, you know, how forward is your positioning when you play? Yeah, how much risk are you taking? Like, you have a risk of dying when you yeah, play more aggressive. Risk of killing. Yeah, the higher risk yeah. Of, of dying. Yeah, exactly. So that's the passive-aggressive sort of continuum that we're going to scale back and forth on. I'm going to play Jim Rayner like I'm Kerrigan, or I'm going to play Jim Rayner like I'm a Siege Dip Hammer. The last one being out of auto attack range, and the other one being way too close for auto attack range. My point was 
when you first play a new hero, you want to play that character on both ends of the spectrum of play them like a siege hammer and, and also play them like a, a Kerrigan. This way you know that, wait, playing Cassia at Rainer range is shitty versus playing Cassia at, Ker- at Kerrigan range. It's need to be done in very, very small attempts when you're going for dives, but you really need to play on both ends of the spectrum of su- uh, very passive and very aggressive and find out where you can actually thrive at. And, then, and Bacon, your, your side was... Yeah. You can explain your, your side. Bacon's like, fuck well, this is <laughs> This is already assumed that you have like a basic grasp of the hero and the talents and the little role the hero's playing. So this is where I'm coming from. If you're going to get better at a hero and get better as a player, then your switch always needs to be on aggression. And... With that switch on, you push it as far as possible at every chance you get. And when you fail, you learn from those mistakes and gradually step it back or find another way with that same aggression at succeeding at what you're trying to do. The reason I say this is aggression is the name of the game. You get ganks, better rotations. You're paying more attention to the minimap because you want to find moments to actually kill somebody who's caught out. You get better team fights because a lot of moments where like a gray main would dive in and get killed out well that's obviously a mistake but there are also moments where a gray main just dives in kind of yolo style and he comes out survived you know surviving with two or three kills to his name and those are the players that have that switch flipped on and also played enough gray main to have the mechanics of oh i can get away with this against these heroes because you have to play a lot of games to with this switch on to get a feel for him. And there's that's what I'm coming from. And if you play passively, you miss chances. You're like a fringe average. You're just kind what? of sitting in the <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> sitting in the lane like while there while there's a team fight going on half the screen away. What? I'm sorry. I I just had to include you in, in this conversation. Yes. Why but, uh, I approve this? <laughs> uh <laughs> That is why I say always have your aggression turned on, and the it's it's the best way to get better more f- quickly. All right, so Tarbren, uh, you actually posted in the Discord and read the other Discord uh, responses. So, what are your uh, your thoughts on uh, what we talked about last week? Okay, so for last week, I think we kind of veered off the aggressive per character. I mean, I think Scott kind of took it as like aggressive as in team strategy. It's like, he doesn't want to wait until they come in to the towers and then hopefully they can get picks that way. He was kind of extending the whole conversation to team strategy, but if we're just going to focus time. Oh, okay. He was just drunk. (laughs) (laughs) That was part of the reason why he was like, no, aggressive. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the question I have is um, for Bacon is that when you're aggressive and you say you'll instinctively know when to kind of dial it back, how are you going to know whether to dial it back? Because we have this Voldemort type character player who's always going to dive in and then when he misses up, it's always the team didn't follow me. So they're always going to be at that too far aggressive level. Like, But to- he's, he's the kind of player where he's not going to be self-critical that's that's what i'm saying it's like it's a mentality thing exactly i'm i'm gonna be aggressive but i also realize there i'm not gonna be a 100 successful and in those failures i'm gonna look at the replay or whatever i need to to uh, get a better feel to what to do next yeah because i think that's an important part and we'll see this in the the team fight spotlight segment we're gonna do but if you dive in and you're aggressive you have to know whether like, you were right to be that aggressive or you were wrong to be that aggressive. You know what I mean? It can't always yeah. be, well, I was aggressive and the team didn't follow me in, right? You have to kind of be objective about it with your own aggressiveness in play. You have to kind of determine why like, your aggressiveness didn't work in this particular situation, right? To have feedback. What? Well, that's also part of the win condition that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. So... If your win condition is you're behind two levels, a talent tier or something, and they're about to get the objective that wins the game, you know, your hand is forced, you have to go yellow, take big risks, 
that's a form of aggression. You could also be aggressive in split pushing. While your foreman denies you're being aggressive by uh, sticking in another lane or double pushing a lane out, two yeah. lanes out. You know, that's another form of aggression. It's just by always having that aggression on, you're looking at the minimap, you're aware of what's going on on the macro side of the game. That way you're always in position to take advantage of the situations you see. Because a lot of times minimap is where it's at. Yeah, I know you're a big uh, um, person about the minimap. <laughs> um, I'm just saying. I mean, it's it, it's all there. Minimap. It's all there. You can make half your. You can make more than half your decisions just by looking at the minimap. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was just I was just commenting about the aggression thing. It's like, it's not just being aggressive. You have to go back and look back at the team fights where it didn't work out. Yeah, because sometimes you're going to be right to be aggressive and still lose because of your teammates and stuff. And sometimes your teammates were like on point, and then you were just over aggressive, and you have to dial back your play. Right? There has to be that feedback loop. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So also, I think, I think like that little, wasn't really mentioned last it time. Could, it could be big swaths of macro play, like I just shouldn't have been there, you know, in the first place, or it could have been things like. I didn't realize that the ETC had slide up. So when I was murdered trying to jump away, he slid me out of my jump. You know, things like that. Like, yeah. that's a very minute detail, but it also teaches you to pay attention to the enemy team in terms of their cooldowns. You know, we all pay attention to Mosh Pit. Like, oh, they, he just used Mosh for, for, for the next two minutes. We can fight all we want because he can't Mosh us. But, you know, there are other big abilities that the enemy enemy team possesses with short cooldowns like stitches hook for example these are things you you know pay attention to and learn over the course of you know hundreds of games we all have thousands of games under our belts but we can all do a better job of breaking down specific matchups that we're having trouble with on characters that we want to get better with but i think what when bacon says play them as aggressive once you have a firm grasp of the character play them as aggressive as possible and then kind of go back and forth between being too aggressive to too passive. We both agree that that's sort of process. Uh, that there's I've, a fine I tuning mean, that happens. Yeah, when, when you're learning the hero, I'm a, we're all the same way. We barely have know what's going. We barely know what's going on in the game because we're trying to figure out what the QWE does. So when, once we're past that stage, what I'm saying is we're constantly pushing, always in a state of push. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't right. think anyone disagrees with that. I mean, you have to challenge yourself to improve, right? And that's no one's going to argue against that. The issue with staying back and not pushing, I don't want to keep, I'm repeat, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but if you sit back, poke in, do damage, and not die because you have your passive play, it, your numbers look good but your effectiveness in the overall game isn't there. So it's just kind of pretty numbers. I'd oh, rather I, want a Grayman that died a couple times, but he has 10 kills and he you know, opened up the map for us <laughs> for, you know, for us to do other things. Did you see the grubby game where he actually has to unbind his ET on Cassio because he was playing here way too aggressively? At that point, he, has, he, he played better by playing more passive. He actually removed his dive tool. Say, now what? Now I'm going to fight with only auto attacks and Qs. He, he's actually yeah, that's, a lot better, but that's that's went way too far. But then he'll he will gradually uh, bring it back in. All right, so so I actually sent the uh, the clip to uh, Nurok, and uh, he actually Liquid's reached out. Nurok? Yeah, Team Liquid yeah. Nurok. Sorry, uh, he's uh, the yeah. ranged flex maybe for mm -hmm. uh, Team Liquid, and this is what he said via Twitter. So it's actually pretty long, but uh, I'll read it. Playing overly aggressive is the same method I use. If I, want to, if I want to learn my limits on a new hero, I play very often without any respect, not backing off, and just fighting until death. Since I am always making use of this, I only recommend this technique. So he basically, he's saying to always be overly aggressive. Depending upon, obviously it all depends. If you're like, you know, let's see, let's see. Um, he says, this is what he says, yes and no, it depends on your hero. Your draft, enemy's draft, map, XP advantage, or disadvantage. You usually don't want to take fights, which you don't have to. Example, you're on Sky Temple. Enemy team has zero keeps left, and you have all three up. 
so basically, you don't fight there unless you have to because you have the advantage. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have more to lose from that engagement than they do. So the, he goes on to say, so you just want to play the map and not go for an all-in fight, which could possibly lead to a comeback for the enemy team, which, which is what I said. Playing aggressive or passive is situational. Playing smart is the best way I can phrase it. Also, another important point is if you're the hyper carry for your team, i.e. if you're in a double support comp, it's crucial that you keep telling yourself that you're the key part of the lineup and should try not to die, unless it's a real favorable trade. If you're very far behind, either in XP or structures, and you don't see a lot of comeback chances, you need to play as aggressive as possible to take any chance you get as a team. All uh, caps, estimation yeah. points. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. As a team, be yeah. aggressive. It's also, he said it's better to do that before you're five levels down. Also, he says, uh, tons of people are scared of fighting uh, 11 or 12 versus level 13 uh, because of, the, of their talent tiered advantage. But often it doesn't matter, in my opinion. People are afraid of numbers and overvalue some, some talent tiers. If it's 19 versus 20, then you should definitely dodge a fight. But he's all. Oh, you could dodge a fight. Yeah, you could but dodge a fight. That's fine. But, yeah. uh, but then he says, but don't be a pussy. Yeah. So, but uh, then I asked well, him. Who what, said that before? Bacon said that. Bacon said old that backpack. Before. Don't be a pussy. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, uh, as you so said. actually, I asked I him. I agree a, with you. I actually asked him a follow up question. Uh, what about 14 versus 16? Or 15 versus 16? And basically what he said was, uh, depends on how far you're behind and how big the, the 16 tier is. Uh, it's all, it says it's always about taking the highest percentage chance of a positive outcome. So there are a lot of factors involved. So basically what he said was, uh, if it's, if it's 12 versus 13, then just take the fight. It's not that big a deal. Then once you get to the 16 talent tier, then you have to be a little bit more, uh, thoughtful before you engage. And my point is, you look at the mini map and you kind of, you can, Read what's going on in the battlefield, right? And see which team has the advantage in terms of the macro. And then in terms of figuring out who has the highest winning uh, percentage chance of winning, that's kind of in it. You, you, you have to develop that over time. You don't know exactly if you do a 5v5 who's going to win all team fights. So that, that just goes into your own ability, your confidence in executing what you need to do. So that's just, you know, grinding out the games on that hero. Agreed. So, uh, thank you, Nurok, again, for taking time out of your day and lowering your standards and answering my, my Twitter questions. <laughs> Does Nurok want to be the, um, uh, the fifth man in this little hero physio spot right there? Put him right there and have him, you know, I'm on the show. I, I told him already via DM. I DM'd him saying, if you ever want to come on, just let me know. You have an open invitation. I don't know. I don't know if I should just flat out invite him to like a, a specific show or not. I don't know. You should. Like, Get him on. Like, right. Yeah. He's already willing to comment for us and be like, you know, our voice of reason. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see. Well, maybe I'll invite him to the next one. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll take the, maybe, uh, maybe I'll do that. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, be aggressive, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Push Aggression. yourself. Came back full Can't circle. Can I get stagnant? Got to yeah. push the show's limits. <laughs> I think, uh, to, to be honest, before we get like another pro player back, I want to think of how to, to make this, sh- how to, what the show should be. I want it to be like something special. You are special. Oh, you mean, mean being, being on the show is special? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, oh, damn. Get him on there. Damn. Okay. Looking Let good. Let me guess this show. Yeah, see, yeah, that's we weird, got, guys. Like, we got four Asians in the house, five <laughs> including me. Oh. This guy can replace Scott. Six the and a half, including show. you three. All right, I guess is there anything else to discuss with the uh, passive versus aggressive? Oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot. Is that, that, uh, it's hard to play aggressive if you're at the lower levels. If you're a solo gray main, you can totally maybe work on your own and get kills on your own. But if you're like a tank, it's hard to be really aggressive because uh, the, the assassins a lot of times don't follow you up. Don't follow up the, you know, I, the, the kills you set up and stuff like that. I, I don't think that's as much of a lower level thing as it is just not being on comms. I think it's, it's, a it's, it's, a, it's a bit of both, but I think the bigger thing is that you're not on comms and the response rate isn't as high for the lower levels. Mm-hmm. If you were on comms and said, okay, I'm going in on this character, like you'd get the response you oh, wanted. Oh, there's Neurok there. I like it. 
You yeah. didn't notice that? We were I just said like he replaces Scott as the white guy in the I show. I didn't notice that. No, I'm actually yeah. looking at the show notes and focus on that. <laughs> but uh, oh, I like I this. Mean, I mean, yeah, right. I see? mean, he was reading. Right, he needs one hundred percent of his attention. Yeah, exactly. yeah, he does. <laughs> oh, that yeah. reading's hard. No, but uh, yeah, have a little pat off the no, sweat. No, but what, what I will say, though, no, what I will say though, <laughs> is that uh, I'm not sweating. By the way, wait, you have a tissue in your hand, ready to do that? <laughs> That's kind of gross. Where'd that prop come from? <laughs> I got tons of props over here. You know. Yeah. What else do you have near you? Yeah, uh, fake floppy ear, something like that. I got some yeah. some rope, some velvet rope. <laughs> yeah, Nurok, Nurok, you should come on the show. You, this would be an honor we for you to come on. Rope. And I have uh, a muscle electro stimulator. I have that too, mm-hmm. right here. I have that close by. Yeah. There, muscle palpitator. That's right. <laughs> My workout in during the show. Me too. <laughs> So it up. What, I, what I will say is that seeing high level players play, if someone's out of t- like if, if, if ETC sets, sets up a kill, then the gray man will, you know, kill that character that, that got set up. Even if they're all, not on comms, that just happens instinctually. And maybe it would help out at the lower levels. We'll see. But we'll see. That's I don't know. Because the gray man's always waiting to be aggressive, as Bacon says. He says, okay, where's mm-hmm. the opportunity? Where's exactly. The opportunity? But like the gray main now, but the gray I main mean, like in silver three isn't doing that. Even if etc sets up a kill, that gray main will get a kill in a mosh pit type of situation. But that's about it. Yeah, and he'll miss the first two seconds of it, saying, "Hey, wait a minute." Exactly. Yeah, that's what it is. That. It's like the lower response rate. It's like, oh wait, he just moshed. Mm-hmm. I was looking at other stuff. Oh wait, I better hit this yeah. person. So. What you just heard is a snippet of the Gankbush podcast, a Heroes of the Storm explicit podcast, a podcast that's made up of co-hosts of players of all different play levels, ranging from a silver type player all the way up to a grandmaster level player. If you liked what you heard, please go to GankbushSquad.com and find the direct link to episode 90. Also, we are on Stitcher, iTunes, and any other major podcast hub. If you enjoyed what you heard, please subscribe to the show and or please rate and review us on either Stitcher or iTunes or any other platform that that you use to get the show.